What's up, everyone? It is Fido. If you are new to the channel, welcome to Self Taught Hustle, where we go over all things code, also go over strategies to hustle on your own as a software developer, and much, much more. Today, we will be going over Figma, which is a browser based design tool to be able to design user interfaces for your clients or for yourself in whatever application you are seeking to build. Some of the benefits of Figma is, as I mentioned before, that it's browser based. So all you have to do is set up an account and you're able to design right away. And you can also collaborate those designs that you make with other users on the platform where they can comment or they can actually, uh, if given the privilege, are able to make edits to your design, so on and so forth, as well as you are able to extract the CSS that would make up your design if you were to go and implement it in whatever uh, website that you're trying to build or whatever application that you're trying to build. Now, that, those are just some of the many features of Figma. It's a very robust tool. So I recommend you guys coming, uh, setting up an account and exploring what's, uh, what's going on here. And just to, to give you a quick overview of of today's crash course what we'll be doing is that we'll be going over some design principles as well as giving you an overall uh, grasp of how to use a figma effectively and not i'm not certain that you'll be an expert when everything is said and done because there's always something new to discover on this platform but uh, ideally we can give you at least a minimum viable understanding of the platform so that it's useful to you and it, you're able to either Either use it with your clients when you go to present or prototype a particular application or desired solution or for yourself when you go to want to build your own applications. This is going to be a tool that's going to come very handy to give you a vision for what the end user interface should look like for that given application or platform. And to get started, all you have to do is just set up an account. And once you have set up an account, you'll have a dashboard here. And you, this is an active dashboard for me, so I'm regularly using this. However, since you're, you'll be new, you won't have as many of these little thumbnails. So in order to get a new file started to begin a design, you're gonna wanna go here to the top left-hand side that says new design file, okay? Now, what'll happen is that when you click that, you'll get led to, a, uh, to, to the file in and of itself and yours will, will, won't have anything in it, right? So it'll just be blank like this, likely with a background color of the same shade that you're seeing here. Uh, the only difference for me is that I already, I, I already worked in this particular file, so I already have a design up. As, but other than that, that, that's how you would be able to generate a new file and get to the portal that you're seeing in front of you with all the little metrics and little things to click on, okay? So once you're here, typically what I like to do is get an idea of what I want to design before I go out to design. Okay, so that means that I'm normally not just designing from scratch. I like to have a reference of something that I am going to go and build before I go out and build it. Because typically that'll allow me to get an idea of what I am aiming for effectively. Now, this is a design that I've already conjured up before uh, myself, but we'll be utilizing this design as a reference for us to build our login portal, right? So that's the key there. So identify what you want to go out and design and then if you understand the terminology for what it is for what interface you're, what graphical interface you're trying to uh, to get onto figma then you can go and use that as a reference to find it okay and what i mean by finding the reference is that if you do not currently have a portfolio of designs that you've already made what you could also do 
uh, is to reference designs that are on Dribble. All you have to do is set up an account here and essentially look up your designs via the search terminology, user interface for a login, user interface for a dashboard, something like that, and you'll get a plethora of different uh, search results. So if you go uh, user interface for a login, let me see. Here we go. And then so you'll get a bunch of examples of different logins, so on and so forth. And typically what I like to do is that I like to reference these these logins and essentially use them as a guide for spacing, different ideas for fonts. And once everything is said and done, once I've analyzed the interface, then all I do is effectively make my version of it on Figma. Okay. So you, you, you sort of utilize these as inspiration. Okay. And shout out, uh, Diana, uh, Palavandishivli. Uh, awesome design and essentially what you would do here is that you'd analyze it okay cool I like it I like it and then you'd bring you, you use that as a reference for you to go build out your version of it your original version take on it but oftentimes I feel like working off of what other designers have already done is a really great way for you to give yourself a guide to not just have to come to Figma and be like okay like what do I do but if you have a visual guide for what you're trying to execute you're going to do a much better job at being able to actually design something that looks presentable, which is the key here. Okay. So now that we have a design to reference, which this will be ours for today, what we're going to do is that we are going to define the viewports that we want to design for. Okay. So the viewport that you want to design for is defined as the, the stuff that you see on your screen. Okay. So literally, like the 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 rectangle that is my desktop that that would be the viewport on your computer right and so if i go to say uh what or here let's do it on the uh what is the what is my viewport and i know you could do this with uh, developer tools but for simplicity i'll just do it here <clears throat> So my current viewport is 1920 by 978, okay? So I want to design for a viewport that fits this, okay? And you really want to, the specifications for what your viewport should be uh, are really going to depend on what client you're on. So depending on what computer that you're on, I normally like to design for, for, for this viewport, which is my current desktop or the screen for my desktop. And then I'll do one for mobile, okay? Typically that tends to work pretty well for me. Um, but always make sure that you ha you're, you're conscious of the, the, the size that you're designing for the, the, the size of your viewport that you're designing for. Cause if you just design willy nilly, what's going to happen is that you're not always going to be able to transfer exactly what you visualize from a spacing standpoint over to your, the, to the actual platform, right. That you're trying to develop on or to the actual viewport that you're trying to develop on. All right. So in our case, we're going to be doing uh, 1920 pixels by 978 pixels, which I think that's just width and height, if I'm not mistaken. And if you go, over here so what we're going to do is first we're going to create a rectangle to simulate that the design of that viewport just any size initially and then if you go here to the top left hand side excuse me the top right hand side you're going to see a w and an h and i know this is kind of it's kind of mini for you guys, but uh, go ahead and squint your eyes a little bit. This, so you're going to go to where it says width and height, just the letters W and H. And then we're going to set the width to the 1920, okay, which is going to be here. All right. And then we're going to set the height to 978, okay, which is uh, the height of um, my current viewport. And you'll see here that it's scaled down, but this is effectively the size of my, of the screen, right? The size of the screen that you're seeing, right? This is, this, the design up here was scaled up when I initially made it because it was meant for uh, promotional purposes. So this is, but, but this is a more realistic uh, sizing for what we're going to try to uh, essentially end up building, or excuse me, end up designing. Okay, so we got that. Now to get the, I, I like to get the mobile viewport as well. So I, I'll just do it for my for my iPhone. So what is the viewport? And I can uh, I can increment that. So what is the viewport for my iPhone? 
12 Pro Max. Bup, 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 bup. I'll just get a viewport here. Uh, let me see. This is the viewport here. So it's 428 by 926. So I'll, I'll come back over here. I'll, I'll tap this square you guys see on the top left hand side of your screen the, the, and it's highlighted in blue right now. And then I'll go ahead and I'll draw another square and then I'll reference the viewport once more. And then it looks like it is a 428 by 926. So I come over here and then I'll do uh, 428 by 926. Okay. There you go, and now I have a and now I have a mobile view, and then I have a desktop view, and and it's that easy in in terms of getting your dimensions, because if you set up a good boundary for what amount of space that you actually have to work on, then you start to be able to make better decisions about what you can actually put within that space, right? But if what your if your canvas effectively is ambiguous, then you're not going to have an easy time being able to determine exactly what you can and can't add on from a visual standpoint as it's some it's just a little bit of design game there for you. Okay, so now we have our um now we have our viewports. I'm actually going to bring this over here so that we can reference it as we're designing. So typically, once I have a reference for what I want to get on, uh, excuse me, what I want to design, I just start pretty much hammering away at it, right? So the way that I recommend to think about design is to really think about shapes a lot. Shapes, space, and um, aesthetic, okay? So so shapes and space, let's break down what shapes we're actually seeing here, okay? Because when I look at these, I don't think about, oh, that, I, I don't think about, oh, that's like, it looks like an interface, in, like most people would say, well, that's a login interface, right? Which is good. But from a design perspective, I see different shapes, okay? And that's how you want to break these down because if you could start breaking down the different elements of the design in terms of shapes, uh, aesthetic, and spacing, then you're going to have a much easier time just being able to design in a more natural manner, right? So let's actually break this down real quick, okay? So what, what shapes are, are we seeing here okay we're seeing a we're, we're seeing a stood up rectangle here we're seeing two rectangles three rectangles here uh, we're seeing some some text here okay spaced right and so it's not just like like this text is smash it's actually spaced right it's the it's and then possible there's space between it there's space between that and then this little co this piece of copy here um the there the, the image in and of itself is like a big square and then i'll start to look at the colors okay well what, what makes this work okay well look at the contrast and colors you got you have a blue with an orange which is somehow some way tends to work and i'll show you guys some a way that you can find color combinations and then you see this orange here orange button you see even see like a little bit of shading there and i really trying to digest the what i'm looking at before i go to design okay and that's really in and that's really one of the key things is to observe what the current design is showing you the, your reference point what it looks like all those details and really attempt to take those in because when you go to design, you start to realize, oh, okay, well, if this is just a rectangle, this this is just a blue rectangle, okay, so then all I have to do for uh, for my example is draw a rectangle, okay, so let's go ahead, let's go draw a rectangle within our canvas. And what I'm going to do is I actually don't want this canvas to move on us while we're working on it. So what I'll do even before that rectangle is that I'll, I'll highlight the canvas. And if you go here to the top left hand side of your screen, you'll be able to lock. OK, you'll be able to use a little padlock. And in that padlock, what you're going to want to do is you, you, you're you going to want to click it down. And now no matter what I do, this this canvas is not going to move on me. OK, which is really good. Uh, it sometimes could be a little bit. Uh, it could be a little bit of a drawback if you're trying to interact with the canvas in and of itself but if you don't want it to be shifting on you while you're designing on it this is this is a good way to be able to uh, set that up okay and you you effectively it's, it's you, you effect effectively paste it to um to like to this uh to the dashboard okay so all right so now that we've locked it down what we're going to want to do is that we're going to write a rec we're going to draw a rectangle actually no you can't interact with it i like that okay cool um 
but we're going to draw a rectangle, right? Because that's what we're referencing here. Okay, would you see that blue rectangle? Okay, we're going to start with that. All right. And in our case, I want to make this a color that I think will look good. And we could just pick a random palette here. We could do like, let's do purple. Yeah, that's kind of like something a little bit more rich. And then here on the right hand side, you're going to be able to access the different variety of colors. Okay. Now, one of the things is that if you know about hex numbers, so if you, so, let's say we look at this in the uh, on the internet, this particular hex here on the right hand side. And I know it's a little bit type, a little bit difficult for you guys to see, but if you go here, okay. So I'm going to put that hex. Uh, the hex number in there and then I'm going to put the hashtag in front of it and then you're going to get a bunch of different color variations okay and often what I really like about understanding what hex numbers are which to think about are just different codes that represent colors on the browser um, one of the benefits of knowing that is that if you enter the hex number into your browser you're going to give yourself access to a bunch of different options like here colorhex.com has different uh, different color combinations that you can look at you can look at complementary colors as well as different shades of the hex number that you've set up which i think this is a very very useful tool because if you're just stuck with red white blue green you're gonna have a very hard time really getting the effect that you want because sometimes the effect that you want is based on the colors that you're utilizing in and of themselves right so by understanding or being able to extrapolate the hex color that you that you desire you open up a whole world of possibilities in terms of what what works with the color palette that you want to use okay so for example let's say that we wanted to go with that purple Colorhexa.com has this really nice, uh, a very nice way of displaying essentially what complementary colors, what are the complementary colors, what are different versionings of this color, um, different ways for you to insert it into your CSS, so on and so forth, right? So it's just a really good, useful tool or really good, useful um, piece of knowledge to understand what, what these hex colors are, okay? And the cool thing about Figma is that it gives you those colors, right? It doesn't just say, hey, this is orange, this is red, but it gives you access to those uh to those hex uh numbers so that you can uh go ahead and input those in your search engine um so let's say i actually want to go for something that's a little bit um a little bit more traditional so we're going to go for a white um but i just i don't want just like a like a pure white i just want something a little bit there you go because what i'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, this to be a little bit white and then I want that login, this login here to be uh, to be actually white. Right. OK, so now that I have the the first panel done, OK, and it starts very simple. What we're going to uh, do is that we're then going to go ahead and add an image here to the right hand side, like very, very, very similar to our example. We're just going to add an image. Now, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys a resource that I like to use for adding images images it's called unsplash.com these are um these are royalty free images so you could you, you could download them as needed and we're going to do a picture of the ocean okay i just want a nice beautiful picture ocean and then a person okay i like to add people to my designs and the reason why i like to add people to my designs let me see uh is because it really adds a human element to the design ocean person smiling um, because people, although you can make it like a, like a very beautiful design, if your design doesn't have a touch of human element to it, I think what, what ends up happening is that people have a hard time connecting with it. Okay. So if you, if you add a design that has somebody smiling, somebody like what, what is the mood that you're trying to present with the thing that you're trying to design is something that I think about a lot. Right. And if you want to get somebody, uh, somebody to be able to connect with your design it's good to be able to integrate somebody that is joyful in the imagery of your design because you can't really
really sure you could look at a piece of design and say, oh, that looks good. But you connect it with it differently when it's an image of a person with the eyes smiling at you. It just creates a different experience and I think become makes the design that much more attractive, right? And a lot of that depends on the branding for what you're trying to design for. So you have to be thinking about those things from a conceptual manner in order for you to be able to execute a successful design, right? It's not just about, okay, can I just make this look good? Um, when you really, when you're really trying to make sure that your stuff stands out, you, I think one of the easiest ways of doing that is to integrate a human element to it. Okay. So I'm going to give you that. Um, all right. So now I just downloaded that image. Okay. So unsplash.com, you, you guys saw, I just put in the search terminology for what I want. Ocean, this design of this pretty girl came up and what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead, uh, and add this here. Okay, and now all I have to do, and if you saw, I just down, I'm on Chrome. All I did was download it and just dragged it on to Figma. Okay, it's, it's that simple. Otherwise, you could use your file explorer. And to do that, all you have to do is uh, hit that left hand, uh, what was I gonna say, that left hand tab, the, the, the Figma logo, and then go down to where it says file. And then when you hit file, if you scroll down, it's gonna say place image, and then you'll be able to get access to your directory, okay, to in, which is essentially the folders in your computer so that you can implant files uh, where needed, okay? So let's just say, I'm just gonna give you guys a, a quick demo of that. So we're gonna hit vector.png is the image that I wanna get onto here. I just hit open, and then it's gonna, t and it's gonna essentially now ask me to, to tell it where I want it to place it. Say I just wanted to place it here, it's gonna place it there, right? So it's, so it's that easy, very, very, very nice, very, very handy, okay? So, okay, so now we have this, all right? So we're gonna bring this image in, and all we have to do to resize this image is to literally just like literally just drag it around right and it'll automatically proportion the image which i think is a big big asset um because a lot of times if I, i've seen tools that don't uh don't automatically proportion these images and it's very easy to stretch these images and that's the one thing that you want to avoid from a design perspective something about the human eye can detect when there are distortions in an image very rapidly so if you for whatever reason destroy your image and it looks stretched it looks compressed it looks pixelated that will stand out and will d decrease the 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 professional aesthetic of what you that, that you're going for so it's very very important that you're conscious of the way that the image is placed on to the canvas and to make sure that that image is placed on there without any distortions okay okay so now that we're doing that we're going to go ahead and go here okay and then go here and then because this is because I, I kind of want her to be in all right so now let me let me break down some more design game so i want her to kind of be in contrast with the spacing for this rectangle okay because if you think about it if you look at the canvas it, it's kind of divided into three sections right now right so it's this rectangle it's the girl and then it's this um i think i can't tell is that like a surfboard it's it's, it's this like blue thing here right well the thing is is the the most content dense pieces of this uh of this current viewport are left heavy if you notice it right because the the, the blue is almost um it's almost hard to it, it's really kind of negative space right so what i'm saying is that this is content heavy and then this will be content heavy so i want to balance that out and balance the visual weight of the of what we're looking at so i'm actually going to flip her over okay so instead of uh, of um, keeping her here uh, from having her back to the login portal. I'm gonna put her face toward the login portal, okay? And I just flip the image like that, okay? Now we're gonna have, now it's just a little bit better, okay? And, and I don't necessarily always love every one of the, the, the way that uh, I paste uh, these images on the first uh, get uh, roundabout, uh, but, um, but a lot of that is also, uh, how do I say this? A lot of that's a lot of what ends up coming out from a design perspective that looks good is to try, try to do some trial and error. Okay. Throw something on there. If it doesn't look good, keep working it right? It's like, you have to think about it kind of like you're working with like a piece of clay, right? You want to be malleable. You want to keep trying new things 
pivoting, adjusting, making sure that you really getting to work with it and mold it and massage it to get it to look like how you want it to look like. Okay. It's not always going to come out. In fact, most of the times it does not come out looking good on the first try. You really have to be able to, uh, have the patience to mold these things into, into fruition. Right. So now that, uh, I, uh, we, we flipped it around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I want to reduce the, the prominence of having this blue thing be here. One of the things that uh, we can do is that we can bring this, uh, the, the white panel here, the white rectangle, uh, up. Okay. One level, right? Because it's everything in Figma is layered, right? So right now, if you take a look at it, this rectangle, the white rectangle is, uh, is, is beneath the actual image, right? So if you go here on the left-hand side, everything is going to present all the assets all the contents of that that of of your design file are going to be presented in a layered format right so the bottom layer will always be the stuff that's being hidden by the top layer effectively right so if you want to and so this is our rectangle and that's our image which is our top layer so if we want to bring the um this bottom layer on top to cover some of that image. What we're going to do is we're literally going to drag it over the image and all of a sudden we've covered that part of the image. Okay. So that's, that's a really useful tool and just understanding how things are layered on Figma, which effectively when it breaks down, everything is layered, then you're going to have a much easier time being able to manage the different contents of your design file. Okay. So, all right. So let's take a look at that. I think that looks a little bit better, honestly, but I still like, I, I just think there's just too much space between the login and this, uh, this, uh, uh, cute girl. So what we're going to do is that we're going to come here. Okay. And we're going to open her up a little bit more and get rid of more of this, um, get rid of a little bit more of this negative space. Okay. So we're going to go here and then go here and then we're going to go here we hit enter okay cool now now you see how she's more centered toward the toward the page she's actually looking at you while you're about to go and log in you're like oh wow she's smiling at me you kind of want to smile back right now we're get, starting to get a better uh, effect and if you can tell we're again we're just following the shape that's a very similar shape to our original inspiration right so we have one rectangle here on the left hand side and then we have more of a square shape here on the right hand side okay so remember all we're doing is breaking down shapes now if you want to um so what i did if you guys saw is that i cropped that image okay so when you go to crop all you have to do is click on the image and then you're gonna um let me actually let me reverse it a little bit okay so i and all you have to do to reverse on figma is just press command z okay so this is before i went to go crop okay so if i want to go crop what i want to do is that i want to highlight that image and then i'm going to click on it okay and then when i click on it what i like to do is that i will i actually how, how did i go crop I, I i do it instinctively sometimes and i can't even oh yeah so i hit click okay and then on the top on the right on the top part of uh your dashboard here you're going to want to go to it's looks like a uh like a square with its uh with with its angles crossing okay so and then it's gonna say a crop image which is the icon on the furthest right toward the in, in the center of your dashboard and you can click that and then it's gonna give you the optionality to crop the image and it's gonna give you the tabs to be able to do so okay and all I did was just crop the image to the given shape that I wanted to fit in right and it's gonna be translucent so you're gonna be able to actually uh, coordinate essentially where your dashboard is on the background which is what i'm doing and the cool thing about figma is that it gives you these little indicators of when you've hit that um and I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in here it gives you these little indicators of when you've uh hit that dashboard or normally it does sometimes it doesn't uh, let me see yeah, there you go. You see how it, it highlights in red? It pretty much tells you, hey, look, you, you, you've hit that dashboard. So it kind of knows what you're trying to do, which is really, really cool. Um, okay, so we're there now. Okay, excellent. 
So now that we have that, um, we've essentially set up the image properly. Um, we now have a, uh, a the two shapes, the, the two initial shapes. One of the things I wanted to show you is that if you guys want to change the color of the image, the uh, the different uh, the different yeah the color of the image, if you, all you have to do is click on the image uh, little icon here on the right hand side, and it's going to give you the ability to change stuff like the exposure, which is uh, okay right now uh the contrast i like to do a little bit higher contrast normally uh the saturation normally i don't like to mess with that too much the temperature uh all this cool stuff right uh tint sometimes i like to it, it, sometimes i like to mess with the tint because it'll give me that in combination with like the temperature will give me the um the vapor wave look <laughs> okay and then we're gonna do i'm just do, do a little bit highlights and i like to normally increase the shadows quite a bit um just so it really stands out really pops right that's that's the key there it's still almost kind of like from an image standpoint you almost want that person to be in that room with you right okay so that's good there and then what i don't know right now is if we'll end up keeping actually this um this gray i guess yeah we, we'll keep the gray we'll keep the gray right now okay so give me just one moment i'm gonna take a quick sip of my water Okay, so now that we have set up the initial image, what I want to do is I want to start getting into some text. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our um, our menu items, okay? Our logo and then our menu items, okay? So we're going to, this, let's just say this is going to be a travel website. So what I did is that I, I went up here to the text box, uh, to the icons here on the top left hand side and hit the, the text icon. And then I just dragged a box, okay? And, and all of a sudden I've... Um, uh, I, I'm able to write uh, text onto the design. And in our case, we're going to call our website uh, Trav, uh, Travelable, like that, right? It's a travel website, but it's a funny name. Okay, so uh, Travelable. And then all, anything that you want to change in terms of your text will always be on the right-hand side. And in our case, what we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to keep this as a bold text and we're going to want to blow it up to a size of let's say uh 20 let's see how that looks in comparison to the size uh let's do 35 uh let's see I'm just referencing for proportion here achievable to the yeah I think I think 35 might be even too much let's do uh 30 yeah 30 is fine uh actually no you know what it just look she look like her head's just so big compared to the uh the font all right let's do travel like that okay all right so we're gonna do travelable will be the name of the sites and just uh, some quick styling elements here you don't have to go you, you don't have to be go crazy right but typically one of the things that you could do is you can you, when you when you're trying to design to uh, decide colors either use uh the hex colors to guide you for what complementary colors are uh or what you can also do is you can reference the colors that are available in the image and then base off of that uh add the colors onto your design right so maybe what we want to do is that we want to use this uh, nice uh, orange that's uh, from this uh, I think it, it's like a like a pillar or like a rusty surfboard and what we're gonna do is just uh, to add some styling to this is that I only want that T to be orange so I highlighted the rest of the text that's not orange and I, I hit over here the color and what I did is that I hit this little um, it's like a I can't I can't remember it's it, the little icon is like of a like a little sucker thing when you like uh, when you press it I can't I can't remember what that's called but uh, what you do it's like when you get in the old school days when you used to get cough medicine like you you put one of these guys and then you put it in a cup or you drip it in a cup so we're gonna do this and what it allows you to do is that it allows you to essentially um, look around to your design file and copy the colors that are in your design file okay so we just all we want to do is we want to go for a nice uh a nice black okay something close to black so we're going to go with that and now we have the the um the two contrasting colors right so we have a t and then travelable which eh, it looks somewhat aesthetic it's not it's nothing crazy but it's enough and 
to be quite honest here, I actually want to go for just a richer black. So I'm going to go ahead, once again, highlight what I want to change. And instead of going with the hex, I can just type in black here as well. And that'll work. Okay. And then now we have uh, somewhat of a designed uh, logo for our site, just something simple to uh, get us through the crash course. Okay. So now that we have the logo, what I want to do is that I want to design these menu items. Okay. And typically, once I have a font, I like to I like to stick to that font. From a design perspective, I recommend really only use, utilizing three fonts maximum. If you're doing more than three fonts, you're gonna you, you're really going to um, kind of ruin the patterned effect that you want to go for when you're designing. Because what you really want to do is that you want to increase familiarities. And when you're when your fonts are when you use too many fonts, a lot of times there is a discontinuity in the visual flow of your website and it just looks a little drawing to the eye to have to be having to make so adjustments so many visual adjustments so it's very very important for you to really be selective of just how many fonts you use recently i've actually only been utilizing one font for the sake of simplicity and speed um, but typically two is probably the most well-rounded number and three is when you really when you're really feeling spicy um, and that's just that's just from practice i didn't i haven't read that in a book anywhere Okay, so let's say that we have it like this, okay? Now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go and decide a font. My favorite font right now that I've been just loving is a font by the name of Poppins. I like the name too, uh, Poppins. And I think it just looks so clean, so modern, uh, very professional, while also not being, um, w w you know, while not being old school, right? It just it looks like it's appropriate for the time. At least that's my opinion of it, and that's that's what I've been utilizing. So we're gonna keep uh, this Poppins font, and then what we're gonna do, and as you saw, all I did was highlight the word, come over here to text, and then utilize one of these font. Um, excuse me, want to uh, utilize the text, uh, excuse me, utilize the drop down to get to uh, Poppins. Okay. So now that's all said and done. Now let's go and make these menu items. A lot of times I just like to copy and paste command V if you are on a Mac and then control V if you are on a Windows machine and I'll just bring it over. Okay. So literally just, uh, you know, highlighted the square, brought it over. And then all I'm going to do here is just adjust this to something that would be more fitting for the size of the fonts, uh, for the menu items okay and remember all i'm doing is really just referencing okay so a lot of referencing and then just adapting the design so that it looks good for what we have going on right uh it's it's, it's really it, it's really that simple okay so then we're gonna do we're, we're gonna bring down the size of that font from being bold to regular okay again on the right hand side of your panel it's gonna give you a lot of options and it even allows you to actually center right left align center right align uh, your text okay which is really really handy okay so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna bring down the size of this font down by uh let's go down to 20 see if that's big enough yeah that's actually probably just perfect um and then we're gonna say um home and we could keep these yeah i think maybe i don't know if i like that contrast that orange unnecessarily but i, I think it's fine um for the menu items, let me see. How do I like that? Uh, you know what? We actually might we we could keep the orange, but I'd probably just go a little bit bolder, just so that's easier to see. Something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so home. Okay, home. And then we're gonna copy this over, and then we're gonna do an about us. About us. And then let's do a uh, product. And all I did was copy and paste. And if you notice, this is the cool thing is that it gives you the idea, like essentially the spacing. Okay. It gives you indicators of the spacing for you to be able to essentially affect to, to be able to space things correctly. And we're going to do um, uh, contact and then we'll do, yeah, we'll do it like this. We'll just do these two for right now. Uh, product's a good one to throw up on here. But if you notice, it's 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 the utilization of space that's so important, right? It under, looking at this and not just looking at the pieces of text, but really being able to take in the negative space, right? And what do I mean by negative is everything that's not... Um, uh, everything that's white. Okay. That's your negative space. So if you're able to preserve, the more that you're able to preserve negative space in your designs, a lot of times the better your design will be. Okay. A lot of times people think that good design means doing a lot of crazy complex things. 
I would say good design is actually the opposite of that. Good design is being able to see what you have in front of you and being able to work with it as opposed to for just forcing your look on it. Okay. Because if you're in, and what does that mean is being respect. One of the things is being respectful to negative space. Okay. So I want to be able to preserve as much space as possible so that your eye doesn't get distracted by a bunch of stuff. Right. I really just want you to be able to see the things that I need you to see and being able to see them in a way that is pleasing to you so that you're more likely to be able to engage with them okay so the one way to do that is by respecting ne negative space and really being able to preserve that as much as i can throughout my design and i think you'll, you, you'll hear some debates and some arguments about that but for the most part i think that uh, a lot of guys would um a lot of guys would would say that that's a pretty principled approach. Okay, so now we have a home, a bow, and then a contact menu item. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of copy here. Okay. Uh, and again, all I'm doing is just utilizing uh, stuff that I've already used before, just copying, pasting it. Except this time we're going to blow this up to maybe like 100. Okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say something like go anywhere okay and maybe we could do like go anywhere maybe something like that i don't know it doesn't know it, it doesn't always come out good on the first time and uh typically what you could also do okay is, is that you can actually divide this up into two uh or partition this into two sections right so let's say we actually want to uh, get rid of the anywhere part what we're going to do is let's say kill this Okay, and then now we have one section, okay? And then now we can have another section, okay? And then now we can type anywhere here by itself and give us a more aesthetic, uh, a, a uh, more control over the spacing of the of the two image, uh, of the two words, right? So if we see, so if we do something like go anywhere, maybe we could do highlight this and then actually color that black, okay? Uh, so we're gonna go black, okay? And then we're gonna say go anywhere. I I think maybe caps might be a little too aggressive, okay? Anywhere. It's actually I think that's misspelled. It's go anywhere with uh. Is it anywhere? Go. Oh, how do you spell anywhere? <laughs> yeah. I thought so. Okay. So let's go. Not anywhere. Let's go here. All right. So th there we go. All right. So there we go. I think that looks pretty decent. I mean, I think the, um, the anywhere is a little bit, uh, is a little bit aggressive doing all caps like that. So let's do any, uh, anywhere like this. Yeah, and this I think this is just a little bit better. Okay, so go anywhere, and then let's say that for whatever reason. Well, I'll show you guys the shading here when when we do the login portal. Okay, and then again, just trying to be as respectful as I can to the space that I have in front of me. Okay, so go anywhere. Um, yeah, I think that that's gonna look good. Okay, so go anywhere just like that okay so go anywhere and then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a uh, login portal this login portal okay um, but before we do that we're, we're gonna add a smaller piece of text underneath this okay and the way that we do that again we hit the text icon we're gonna do this and then we're gonna reduce the size of the font let's just do to a 20 okay so the world is in your hands what do you want to see okay just just some copy and then you can arrange the way that the uh, the way that the text is shown so you could center it you could right align it you could left align it you could you, you could add it to the center of the box or to the bottom of the box or to the top of the box as well too which is also really really helpful um and typically i like to uh let me see. Is this enough text? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think the only thing is that we can probably make it just a little bit better. Excuse me, a little bit bigger. So, 20, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so go anywhere. And, and and I'm always analyzing, okay, how does this work with that? How does that work with that? You know, like I'm always 
essentially evaluating how not just the little piece that I'm working on, but how does everything look like in conjunction? Do I feel, is it giving me the right feeling? Okay. And that's the thing with design is that it's not as logic based as much as, as it is like really being in tune with what looks good and what doesn't look good. And a lot of times it's actually going to invoke a feeling from, from, from you. And that does, that it is to some extent a structured form of art in that degree, right? Where it's going to invoke a feeling from you and you really have to pay attention. Okay. What, what is the brand? What is the feeling that the brand that you're working with trying to represent? And are you effectively representing that feeling in your design, uh, is a really good gauge to identify whether or not you're hitting the mark or not. Okay. And that takes some time to develop. You, 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 you won't always just have that, but, um, I do think, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good to, to, to mention that. And you know, um, uh, go anywhere. I like this, but I just, I just think the anywhere is just weird. This Y is kind of throwing it off. Um, go places. We do something like go places. Yeah. And then maybe just do lowercase that. Oh yeah. I think this is, this is much better, much, much, much better. Uh, go places. We could do like an exclamation mark. Ah, yeah, we could do an exclamation. Ah, I don't like the exclamation mark. Um, but like I said, molding. Okay, always molding, always playing with it. You you really um, you really want to give yourself the opportunity to look at it from different angles. Think about okay, does this look good? Does it not look good? Always evaluating as you go. Okay, so so far I think this is actually a superior design um, to the go anywhere. So we're gonna what I like to do is I like to group my stuff. So if you ever want to group your stuff, you could just say uh, you could highlight the elements that you want to group. Okay, you highlight them, you double click, and then you say you scroll down here to group. Group, okay, and then you say um, uh, you say header, and, and if you go to the left side, it's going to ask you to name the group, uh, the name of the group that you just uh, put together, and we're, we're going to call this header title, okay. And then now, uh, now that we have that group, first of all, if we move it, you can move it in terms of the layering, whether it's top or bottom. But then what you can also do is that when you move, you're not just moving these two individual pieces anymore. You're moving the entire group. Okay. So that's super handy when you have to move a lot of stuff. Um, when you want to place a lot of stuff and you, you have to move it around. Okay. So go anywhere. Okay. And then we're going to put that, uh, these words here. And again, just referencing, uh, Reference, referencing the material that already exists. Uh, the world is in your hands. What do you want to see? Uh, there you do. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so now we have that. And now we're going to start working into the login. And again, always just breaking down what I'm seeing. Okay, do three rectangles. Okay, so we're going to do three rectangles. Once again, what we're going to do is that we are going to utilize the rectangle shape. Okay, and there's other shapes too. There's there's circles. You could even do a star. There's a polygon. And if you really want, you could even draw your own shape with uh, this uh, this pen pool, which I, can, I, I think should be kind of a tutorial in and of itself. But but um, you can't you can draw your own shapes. Um, do doing utilizing something called vectors, which is really really cool and a little bit more advanced, but something I've been getting into recently. Um, okay, so now let's say I, I don't like one of the big rules is I don't I'm not a big fan of like hard corners. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to round my edges. Okay, so the way that <laughs> if anybody ever asks, Fido likes to round his edges. <laughs> All right, so what I like to do is I'll highlight the rectangle, and if you go here to the right hand side, it'll give you the option to um, to essentially corner to to round those edges by the radius. If you guys ever worked with CSS, this would be the border radius property, and in our case, we want to change that given property to twenty. Okay, and now we have a more rounded, I think, more of it, just a more modern looking edge. Um, uh, and in fact, I mean, we, we essentially destroyed the edge completely. So I want to, I want it to retain just a little bit of it. Let's actually keep that at, um, let's keep this at 10. Okay. And we're able to affect, uh, each of these corners of the, of the rectangle. Okay. And this actually, if you go to the right hand side, you'll see, uh, kind of these dashes and these dashes will give you the ability to affect each of those corners independently. So if I just want to round one, uh, three of the corners, but keep one, uh, squared off, and then you're able to do that. And as you can see there, this one is squared off while the, the, this one's rounded, that one's rounded and that one's rounded. Right. And that just gives you a little bit extra, um, 
a little bit of extra control, um, but that's that's up to you and what what, uh, what your needs are from a design perspective. Okay, so we have the first rectangle. We're gonna need three of these. Okay, so the first two are going to be for the login information, the inputs, and then the third one is gonna be the button. Okay, the actual button in and of itself. Okay, so we got that. I'm actually gonna move this up just a little bit just a little bit so that we can um, get a little bit more space to work. And I'm gonna decrease this poppins to like a semi-bold. And you see here how like as I move things, I realize, okay, actually now that I'm seeing this in a different space, uh, maybe maybe I don't want this bold anymore. And then I change that, right? Like that, like those little thoughts, um, follow those little, follow, those, follow that instinct, give it a shot to see how it feels, okay? There I, um, Maybe I want this actually now to be black. Yeah, I think, nah, we'll keep it orange. All right, it's okay, so that's all done. Um, as you guys can see, I uh, I love this stuff, so I, it's very easy for me to get like super ADD and like <laughs> jump around and want to do all this uh, in like uh, in an unsequential way. Okay, so, all right, so now we have those first two. We're gonna drag these these up here because these are the shapes for the inputs, okay? And these inputs, what we're gonna do is that we're actually going to make them, um, let's see, we should make them, uh, let's make them actually this color and then the same color as the background. And what we're gonna do is that we are going to add a, a shadow effect to these, okay? So what I did is that I made them the same color as the background, so you, that's why you see them disappearing, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a shadow effect. So I go to the right-hand side here, go to where it says effects, I click that, and it's gonna give you a drop shadow, okay? Which is good for most situations, but in our situation, we wanna do an inner shadow to uh, outline the inside of the um, inside the the inside of that uh, inbox, right? Um, ex excuse me, input box. Now, now that we have that, um, let me see. I'm trying to determine how necessary it is to do an outline of the uh, of the actual uh, portal here. Uh, I'll, I'll do one. So. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm gonna do, and this is this is a little bit adding just a little bit of originality to it, is I'm gonna draw a rectangle, okay? And I'm gonna drag that rectangle beneath the the actual login form, okay? Like the, the actual stuff for the login form. And right now, um, this is this is the uh, the submit button, it's just in the same color as the um, as the login form. But what I'm gonna do is that in that form, I'm just gonna give it some definitive shape here, okay? So I'm gonna actually bring this over here for a little bit okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to round those edges to a 20 okay and i'm actually going to color this form um i'm going to color this form white let's see yeah so i'm going to color that form white and then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to bring these guys here uh over to the center a little bit and then probably resize them here in just a moment okay like that and then like that okay and then what i want to do is i actually want to add a particular color for the button too just so, so that you guys can see everything start to kind of come together here and i'm gonna go ahead and then just uh let's see let's go with this blue i like uh I like that blue there okay and with that blue color um now you're starting to see kind of the form uh come together right so you see the actual um the background with the form in and of itself right and just lightly outlined okay and i like these like little subtleties right where if you look at it at first glance you're like okay there's a form there but if you look at it closely there's actually a contrast between the two colors right and so i think those little subtleties really add a degree of professionalism that uh you wouldn't uh, otherwise see um if you didn't uh give it that attention i'm gonna move this up just a little bit more okay and then maybe move these guys up just a tad bit and you notice there if you hold shift and you click around to different elements you'll be able to drag them together even if they're not a group okay which is uh, super super handy okay so that's all in alignment got that now we have our form 
and then see let's just add some elements here we're going to do some text elements and the text elements we've already we've already gone over how to do them so i'm actually gonna i'm just gonna uh, move through this just a little bit faster the spacing here is still very tight so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring um i'm gonna highlight this guy and i'm gonna bring that guy uh, outside i think it's already at the top oh no now it's at the top okay so let me see here no see i think it was at the top there let me bring that back yeah the, the, the spacing is just a little too tight right now so let me see if i center it huh so i can just bring this here so i'm just going to drag that guy up individually and then bring this guy up separately okay that's a little bit better and really the reason why the spacing became tight is because I added this this box here okay and remember what I told you guys what one of the goals that I try to go for is to preserve as much white space as possible okay so and I kind of want every element on the page to have enough white space for it to be its own visual uh, presentation right to some degree so when I'm eating too much white so when two elements are essentially eating too much white space sometimes I think one of the problems that you'll run into is that things start to look kind of congested um so what i'm gonna do uh for right now is that i'm actually going to i'm gonna get rid of the this this nice uh form like the outline of the form and then i might bring it back later but it, i think it's just going to give us a little bit more space to work with here if we get rid of it okay and then i'm going to highlight uh the input boxes as um or i'm going to change the color to just to pure white which i think is also going to make it just a little bit cleaner and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to write in the text okay so we're going to do the uh sign in below Let's see text okay and all I did was a command C and then a command V. Okay. Put it there. And what does it say? What did I say? Sign up below. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, sign up below like this. Okay. And then bring it out. And when I'm doing stuff like this, I just like to align it. So I just think about like an imaginary line going down here on the left-hand side and I'll align everything to that. Okay, so the sign up below, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Except I'm gonna, um, for stuff that's really, that needs to be instructional, typically I like to go with a nice black. And the reason why is just because you wanna, since it's instructional, you, 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 you essentially can't miss the opportunity for somebody to understand what's going on right so utilizing black it just makes an easy contrast for people to see and makes it a little bit easier for them to work with your website right so we're going to do um just do regular but we're going to downsize this up to like an 18 so that it looks uh, to a font size of 18 so that it doesn't look so aggressive and then we're going to utilize the same uh the same font the sign up below font and we're going to drag it down and you see here how it's being hidden be below this input box what we're going to want to do is find where that uh where that layer is in your um in the asset section here on your left hand side or, or on your layer section on the left hand side and bring that layer to the top okay so that there's so that it's not in the way you could also do when you highlight it like that you could double click it and then you could say uh bring to the front which is this command here okay bring to the front and all of a sudden it's in the front okay and then we're gonna do that all right and then we're gonna do um we're gonna do 20 like that and we're gonna do uh email okay and then this is this is going to be the placeholder text and we're going to make that in to a bold and then i don't like the fact that it's very very aggressive in terms of um it being black there like it's it's just kind of like you you want somebody to know that it's an email right but you don't need to they don't need to get like slapped in the face with it so i just i normally like to go for a more subtle placeholder in this one it's just a little too subtle so we're gonna do is just like that okay i think that 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 just gives it a more um uh it's just a better aesthetic so email okay and then we're gonna do another one I'm going to do, oh shoot, I just copied and pasted, okay. And notice that you're getting the, the spacing right, respective to the other contents on the page, right? And that's really, really important because it's, it's going to essentially allow you to automatically space everything correctly if you um, if you follow those guidelines. And it's, it's extremely, extremely helpful. Okay, so password, so email, password, okay. Now we got that. This, I just, I just think it's just a medium. It's going to make it look a little bit better, okay.
and then now we have the password okay and now we're gonna drag in that uh, we're gonna drag in that piece of text where it says password there and we're gonna highlight it again and we are going to write that out as submit okay and typically when I, I, I like to make uh, these buttons that if it's especially if it's only one button on the page that's obvious right so that blue is really going to contrast with this background although there's not a whole lot of blue in the image it's enough to to, to, to actually in my opinion be able to justify having this uh, shade of blue in here okay and it's standing out, which is good. And then um, it's easy. It's just going to be easy for somebody to click. And I think there's, if you guys look at the bootstrap documentation, like the, the library bootstrap, they're going to, um, they, they associate the different colors with, uh, on these buttons with like a different uh, emotion. Okay. Uh, and blue just kind of gives you that, uh, that sense of security of professionalism, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but what we're going to be doing here is that we're going to get this uh, submit button and we're going to blow it up to, uh, let's, let's blow it up to, 50 oh that's it's a little too big <laughs> way too big all right let's see uh 25 and i think this looks good okay now let's say that i want to add i want to make sure this button stands out a little bit again so i'll highlight it and then i want to add an effect okay and all of a sudden i now have a uh, a button that is sticking out with a uh, uh, shadow effect there on the bottom and you can actually change that shadow uh essentially the direction of that shadow by clicking down here in the little carrot excuse me uh on the little sun and it's going to give you the direction of the x y coordinates as well as your blur so i want to increase the blur just a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural i just added five there very very subtle change but just to show you guys just the degree of control that you can have over how things are presented uh, on Figma. Okay, so now we have that. And to be quite honest, I we're, we're pretty much done. I mean, that, that would be the core of what we're trying to do. But do you see here... Uh, there's just more spacing available like there's more spacing here at the bottom and ours were just a little bit congested what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to reduce the size of these guys to let's reduce the size of these guys to 75 okay um let's see okay just to preserve some white space because this looks cool but it, it's not necessary to essentially have everything look so scrunched right and remember one of the big i think one of the biggest principles is space okay so if you can respect the space typically you're going to have an easier time being able to design things properly okay so let me see all right so now we have we have just a little bit more space we're being a little bit every every little piece of content here is, is kind of has its own little uh, part of the canvas which is what we want to preserve okay is that is that the negative space and go like this okay there we go now we're starting to see just uh, it's just starting to look just a little bit better okay and then the last little thing that we're going to add here is we're going to add a little um a little uh, a little plain uh favicon is it favicon i think oh no a, a plain uh image from font awesome so if you guys go to font awesome you're gonna give yourself. You, you're gonna really uh, give your your pages the, the the detail that they need to really stand out from a design perspective. And one of the things that you could do is you could look up these little uh, th these little vectored images. And what we're gonna look up is an airplane. Okay, so we, we want an airplane and not a fighter jet, but I like this one. Let's see if we could do the one that's taking off. Usually they're free. Sometimes they're not. But let's download it. Okay, we got that one, and you'll, you'll get an SVG. And all you have to do with the, even with the SVGs, all you have to do is just you just drag it on here, and all of a sudden you have the SVG to work with. Okay, now um, usually that they're contained within um, this. What is it? What is, I can't remember what this is called. Oh yeah, they're contained within a frame. So what you're gonna want to do is I normally like to um, I, I normally like to highlight the frame, and then I like to ungroup it so that I, I have full control over the actual airplane. And it looks like I'll need to do that just one more time. So I'll highlight it and then just like we grouped the first set of um, the first set of con the first pieces of content we're going to ungroup this and now we have full control of the plane okay now we're going to come over here okay and what we're going to do is that we are going to scrunch it down okay and a lot of times these these will stretch okay as 
you can see, which is not good. Remember, stretching distortion of images is never good. So what you're going to want to do is let's go back here to the original state. I think this is it right here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to resize things by the corner, not 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 just not just aggressively by the sides. Okay. And the way that you do a good resizing is that you you you, you go to the corner, you hit shift, okay, and then you drag diagonally, okay. And this is going to preserve the images so that they don't get stretched. Shout out InDesign because that's where I learned this from. <laughs> oh man! All right, so now you now you have it highlighted like that. We we scrunched it down, okay. And I don't know if I want to add that here or if I want to add that here. Let me see. You could probably just travelable. Probably add it here. I think. Yeah, I think this is fine here. Okay. Cause, and it really what I want to, I almost want to have this go be the same sizing of this plane so that it looks proportionate to, um, to what we have going on here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, fill this with, let's see if we make it orange, how that looks. Yeah. I actually think that this works, that orange works really well. If we make the places black like that, just like that. Yeah. So go places, okay? And there you go. We, 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 we've designed our, our login portal. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, that should be enough to get you guys uh, started in terms of overall how to use Figma. Um, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do, guys. It's uh, I love I love utilizing this tool. Uh, I, I can I can spend hours on this uh, just making just you know, go like hammering away at these designs just cause I enjoy working with them so much. And, um, yeah, it was, it was really, really fun to uh, be able to provide this information to you guys. Let me know if, um, you need, uh, it, it, what, what other stuff you like to look at. Um, if you guys are currently learning to code by the way, and you are stuck and would like to get unstuck, I do have a free course or a free strategy that I am sending to your email when you sign up here at, uh, self hustle.net go ahead and add your email here and i will give you the free strategy for how to break out of a tutorial hell as well as you'll get announcements for when i have courses coming up so on and so forth so i really appreciate make sure to comment like share and of course subscribe i appreciate you once again and i will see you guys on the next one